Hi, I'm Fred. And I'm Sarah, a.k.a. the Paris Quiz Mistress. We're two friends addicted to trivia, and we're watching... Rewatching... Alias. But this is... Not, not an, an Alias, alias podcast. podcast. All right, Fred, we're into it now. Season 2, Episode 3, Cypher. All the plots thicken. Oh, it's thicker than pea soup out there. <laughs> Let us have no ado whatsoever and get into your 60 second summary of Cypher before some trivia action. I go. So, Sydney, she does jog all the way to the CIA all the time. That's confirmed. They tell her there's a super camera that has to be stolen from Sri Lanka with Sark because he's a boss now. Dad goes to the shrink for some gaslighting advice and the shrink is like, uh, nope. And then dad is, I don't know, into some weird stuff. There's so much flying. I think the carbon footprint of this episode is just all over the place. Sloan seems to be sad, even though he does the one who killed the wife. There's a lot of roses. I really like the red suit that she gets into Sydney to go and defuse the thing in the rocket. And then they go to an ice cavern, <laughs> 20 square miles of frozen tundrosity, and uh, then they're under the ice. <laughs> cool. So I went for a pretty straightforward theme. Siberia? Sort of. Uh, spaceships? No, it was very cold. Oh, yes. So cold weather? Cold things. Cold things! Ooh, how cold ice cold. So, Fred, are you ready for your five-question quiz about cold things? Yes. All right, here we go. Number one, the theoretical temperature absolute zero equals zero degrees on which temperature scale? So you're asking me to go back to my physics class from uh, high school. Thank you very much. I believe it's Mr. K... Mr. K himself, Mr. Kelvin, the Kelvin scale. Yes. Yes. And actually, so I think for super nerds out there who are yelling at me, you don't actually say degrees Kelvin. You just say zero Kelvin or... Oh, I think that's true. Yeah. You don't put the little circle. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no degrees. Yeah. A Kelvin unit Mm -hmm. is equal to degrees Celsius, but it's just scaled differently. Whereas like fahrenheit and celsius is yes different it's not yeah, one yeah, to yeah. one no it's not one to one but kelvin is i think it's one to one isn't it yeah i believe yeah. so mm-hmm. but not a degree no, no. Not, a de- not a degree so don't at me no it doesn't have a degree in physics we don't <laughs> <laughs> not even a little bit uh, number two in 1972 there was an aviation disaster Involving a charter flight with 45 passengers and crew, including a whole rugby team. 16 survivors were rescued after 72 days of extreme cold at an elevation of 3,570 meters. In which mountain range did this disaster occur? Okay, so in my head I was thinking South America. I was thinking, oh, what's the country? Is it Uruguay? Is it Chile? Something like that. So I'm going to go for the Andes. Yep. Is is that good? It was the Andes. Yep. The accident and the subsequent survival became known as the Andes flight disaster or the miracle of the Andes or Milagro de los Andes. Milagro de los Andes. Ooh. That makes it sound almost sexy when it's horrible (laughs) yeah not good cannibalism yeah we love a cannibalism story i remember this mostly because of the film alive oh i was about to say i have not seen a movie about it but i've heard of it Uh, apparently the rescue efforts they gave up after eight days wow just like oh well (laughs) like what are you gonna do try more (laughs) but yeah crazy story what was that the 70s that was in the 70s yeah would not want that to happen to me. Not in the 70s, because apparently eight days was all they could do back then. It was a pilot error. Just, oh. Just flew into some mountains. <laughs> <laughs> just flew. I think it was one of those. It, it almost sounds cartoonish where they, I think you just flew between two peaks and the wings flew off. <laughs> <laughs> like misjudged. Yeah, like whoopsie. Yeah. We're going down, folks. Anyways. We're going down. Very, very cold. Next. Cold question. 
Just kind of an open answer. I want to know if you could explain to me the difference between cryonics and cryogenics. I'm pretty sure the difference is GE to start with. Uh Ah, Is it about if the frozen thing is alive or not? No. No. Okay. Are those two means of preservation? No. No. Okay. So cryogenic is the thing usually you hear where Walt Disney is in the tank somewhere waiting for technology to catch up so that it can be unfrosted and come back to do Dumbo 3. That's what you hear. Cryonics is uh, a lot of tears. No. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Am I anywhere close to anything? So this is something I always mixed up. When I was testing this question, my tester was like, "Um, is cryonics just the head? (laughs) (laughs) Which I thought was brilliant. No. So (laughs) cryogenics Mm -hmm. is a discipline in physics, about the production and behavior of materials Mm -hmm. at very low temperatures. Okay. It's a scientific field. Cryogenics. Cryogenics. Uh, uh Uh-huh. Cryonics refers to all the Disney and the Futurama and all this crap that's kind of a pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the low temperature freezing and storage of human remains with the speculative hope that resurrection may be possible in the future. So that's cryonics. That's the silly one. That's the kooky one. Kooky one. That's the Austin Powers. (laughs) I guess they use the word cryogenic to give themselves some kind of scientific validity, but actually they're full pseudoscience. There were a lot of people that were like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then at the end, they were just like, actually, no, just do it regular. (laughs) (laughs) Just... Just burn me, thank you. <laughs> I think there's like between 500 and 1,000... Uh, Actual fr- people? Frozen people, something like that. I mean, you're dead. You might as well. It's very expensive. Yeah, I mean, you're dead. Again, you're not using the money. Yeah, but shouldn't you use the energy for this low-temperature storage for like the rest of humanity? Seems very selfish. Oh, oh yeah, of course it's very <laughs> selfish and like completely crazy. But I'm like, hey, if you're crazy to the end you might as well freeze your tissues and hope someone can safely defrost them in a giant microwave however to do it <laughs> giant microwave <laughs> question four <laughs> dip and dots uh do you know what dip and dots is look at my eyes i'm <laughs> i'm gonna tell you okay. what dip and dots is because i believe it's quite american so it's an ice cream that's created by flash freezing ice cream mix and liquid nitrogen you can't really buy them in like the supermarket because they have to be stored at very low temperatures so you can buy them at like malls or stadiums and stuff like that okay so dip and dots operates freezers that can go down to negative 85 degrees celsius but in 2020 Dippin' Dots, the company, began selling these special freezers to store what? An item with a temperature requirement of negative 70 degrees Celsius to remain effective. So what were they storing? I believe that it's the COVID-19 vaccine. Because cold storage was one of the issues with that little uh, invention Yes. Do you remember which vaccine had the cold chain? Moderna? (laughs) Pfizer? (laughs) It was a Pfizer BioNTech, yes. Uh, Coin flip. Coin flip. Right. uh, Pfizer. Okay. Yes. Didn't they all have storage issues, but Pfizer was maybe worse? I don't know. I'm trying to save myself here, but... uh... I think probably because they were... Based on the same technology, I think probably Pfizer and Moderna Mm -hmm. had the cold chain issue. But because Pfizer is German, it's even colder? Sure. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Dippin' Dots, uh, the unexpected heroes (laughs) of the COVID vaccine rollout. Thank you for your service, Dippin' Dots. Thank you for your service, Dippin' Dots. They were like, who has cold freezers? (laughs) Almost like just eating Dippin' Dots in the back (laughs) in the lab. They're like, I don't know. They use liquid nitrogen. Maybe they could help. You have one last question. I am doing a speed round. Ooh, speed round. Yeah, taking a leaf out of the old book of Fred Mm -hmm. with a speed round. And this speed round, I got the inspiration from a very old episode of Good Job Brain. And it's called Snow or No Snow. 
So you have to tell me, has it ever snowed in the following places <laughs> in recorded history? We've been recording probably 150 years, probably, yeah. of meteorological data. So that's kind of the time frame we're looking at. So snow or no snow. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Cairo, Egypt. I get to speed around. God damn it. No snow. So it snowed in 2013, which was the first time in 112 years. I thought I heard about it. I was like, grumble, grumble. New Delhi, India. No snow. No snow. They can get frost and hail, though. Oh, okay. Miami. Snow. Yep, in 1977. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Once in 77. Yeah. The hottest place on earth, Death Valley, California, USA. Snow at night? Yes, correct. It snowed uh, half an inch in 1922. Okay. In Death Valley. Honolulu, Hawaii. No snow. No. Correct. Fiji. Are they a little lower? I'll say no snow. No snow. Okay. And last one, Palermo, Sicily. Yeah, snow. Yep, it snowed about a dozen times uh, since 1945. So not very often, but they have had it. Yeah, I would I would assume so. They're, yeah. Okay, okay. So Cairo. Uh, Cairo. Mm-hmm. That was snow or no snow. Nice quiz. It's very cold, uh... Very cold in Siberia. Yeah, exactly. They're under the ice. Oh, yes. <laughs> How? Submarines? Tunnels? I don't know. I mean, I yeah, know. there are a lot of Rambaldi tunnels. <laughs> All right, so what do we think of what I call the Oompa Loompa in space outfit? So the, that orange jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. I remember reading in an interview at the time that this was uh, Jennifer Garner's favorite look. Of the show. Oh, wow. Why? It's just fun. It, it is very fun. But she's sledding. She's sledding on the suitcase. She's losing. <laughs> losing. Losing. Is it a suitcase that Marshall gives her? Yeah. Yeah. It's like this goes at like way too fast for a human body. It was interesting because Sark was smart. Sark felt something was up and he actually tried something. And it was nice to have actual, you know, compared to episode one, Season two, where she just escapes because no one is guarding her. <laughs> it's like, oh, you again, same place, same time. You forget to like just leave one person to look after her. This time she was like, okay, my plan is being counter planned, and I need to be fast. And that was that was nice. That was exciting. Yeah, because they cut the video feed for a couple of minutes, yeah. and Sark just said, "Watch yeah. the thing without the video." Yeah, because yeah. he thought, yeah, he was. Or oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to tell everybody the Asiatic Space Agency is crap. Launch it now. Bunch of NASA wannabes over here. Like, boo-hoo. <laughs> it's like, launch it, please. Okay. I realize that there's a lot of tropes with elevators in this show, but I noticed another one, that if an elevator door closes, somebody inside is about to lose consciousness. <laughs> Yeah, when she uh, neck tackles the... <laughs> yeah, she tranks someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, worst place to be in with Sydney. You yeah. don't want to go in the elevator. Let's talk about a moment that I would say irked me. Irked? Yes, go which on. is the um, hypnotherapy session. <sighs> it was the zoom and enhance of hypnosis. <laughs> But that's not how it works. It's like, remember when you passed a ride by its computer? Can you pause your memory and then zoom and enhance on what it was writing? I'm like, I allow Alias very large suspension of disbelief, but you you are out of bounds, (laughs) J.J. Abrams, frankly. That didn't bother me. I was just like, yeah, I'm sure this is how this works. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's like, can you rewind your memory? Like, oh, can you just like pause at this frame i was like stop it stop it it's so much not only because of the trauma he's relieving and they're like and when we snap our fingers you'll be fine as if nothing ever happened in the three i'm like okay this guy is like multi-traumatized to the maximum like can you just stop putting will tipping through 
all this mess. Poor, poor Bradley Cooper. <sighs> God, I mean, he gets to act, I guess. So uh, good for him. But yeah. So yeah, I hope you uh, will remember the difference between cryonics and cryogenics. One of them is fake. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I feel like you're just keeping your options open in case you want to freeze your body in, uh, what, 90 years? You're so fresh and young. Thanks. (laughs) On that. Bye, everybody. Next time. Thanks for listening to Not an Alias podcast produced by Celia Brando with original music by Mad98. If you love what we do, leave us a tip. The link to the tip jar is in the description. And you can follow all things trivia at Paris Quiz Mistress. And all things Fred at Fred Me Up. Until next time. Stay nerdy and keep quizzing. 